Hello everyone and welcome to episode 6 of Drawdy United Preseason Weekly. This week I'm delighted to be joined alongside by Drawdy United midfielder and a new recruit for the 2021 season, Dara Markey. Dara, how are you? All good, Luke. Yeah, how are you? Yeah, all good, mate. All good. Anyways, how are things with yourself, first of all? Um, how are you finding the lockdown? Um, obviously, it's, it's a difficult time for everyone. Yeah, lockdown's been tough, to be honest. Um, the, this is the fourth one, I think, now. Some motivation and stuff has just gone out the window. I think the novelty yeah. has gone. You know, people are were all right with it, probably the first, maybe even the second time around. But now everyone's just kind of waiting for uh, this to all end. But other than that, like keeping busy at training and that, which is probably, we're probably lucky in that sense. You know, a lot of people don't have that. So uh, probably not as bad for me as it is for a lot of other people. Yeah, you mentioned there uh, about the training. You've had two full weeks so far, and you're 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 well into your second week, uh, your third week now. So, uh, how are you finding it so far, and how have you settled in with the rest of the group? Yeah, loving it so far. Uh, it's kind of a, a new start for me, kind of going into the, the unknown, I suppose, because it's my first time at a club other than Pats, you know. So, um, but like the lads have been so welcoming. Training's been really good, you know. It's been a good balance of fitness work and ball work at the same time so like everyone's in great mood as you would be coming into pre-season just has to we have to do our best now to maintain that throughout the whole year yeah you mentioned there at the balance between ball work and fitness work how important do you think that is at the very start of the season yeah well it's it's a long off season so i think you have to yes you have to be going into pre-season with a base sort of base fitness anyways at the least and then other than that it's just about dusting off the cobwebs I suppose you have to get rid of any rust you've had uh, get used to back touching the ball change the direction and stuff like that which will come with match fitness too but uh, it's it's you have to be fit in, in the league world there's no doubt about that and the fittest teams are they're they're always the best teams in the league so like there's no coincidence so it's always going to help if it's a fit group, which it is. Like, there's no one's really large distance behind in the runs, you know. So, um, like, yeah, it's a really good fit group. So that's really important. Yeah. Looking back on your time with Pat, uh, who you've spent your, your most of your career so far with, like, it must have been a, obviously a difficult decision for yourself uh, to make uh, after being with them for such a long time. Uh, yeah, it was kind of... The end of an era for me but like it was probably coming for a long time that I, I just had to get out and get back and join it and kind of playing give myself the best chance of playing as much as possible which is it's the most important thing at, at my age anyway it's just playing as much games and getting as much experience as you can so like I miss like I've, I've got lots of good friends at the club and I, I miss them that, like that but like it's a selfish game it's a short career too so in that sense, it wasn't really that hard of a decision. Like I, I just had to get out and I had to give myself the best chance of playing as much as I can. Yeah, you had plenty of success with, with your time with Pats, which we would discuss. But how did you find your time there? As you, as I mentioned, you had spent like quite a while there. You even uh, graduated from the, from the academy. Yeah, I loved it there. Um, like I think it was six years from under nineteens up, and like the nineteens team was brilliant. College was great, like training and then college, it was a good life to live. Um, like training full time with a really good team at, at the time as well. The squad was great. Um, and then I got in eventually uh, and I've gained a lot of experience since then. You know, I've played in Europe, I've been competing the top end and I've been keep competing at the bottom end as well uh, with, the, with the team as well. So. Uh, it's an experience that will stand me in good stead uh, for the rest of my career, for sure. Yeah, you mentioned there the experience that you have from playing in the likes of Europe and the Premier Division. Um, like that will definitely stand to yourself, as you mentioned. But how much of a benefit do you think that you can be for the, the younger lads in the, in the, within the group who this is their first time playing in the Premier Division? Yeah, it's it's a weird one because I just from like it's it's a bit mad because I was. The, one of the younger lads of Pats, you know, so, but now I'm, I'm kind of, I suppose, developing into an older head now at Drogheda, so it's kind of a new thing for me where I have to try and 
set example for players and try to give good advice to the young lads, which there's a lot of really good players there, got a lot of good young players there at Drogheda. So uh, I suppose, yeah, it's something new. Um, I'll do my best just to give any advice if I can. Like, as I said, like, as you said too, that I have got some good experience now in the league. So I'd know certain things about the game now that I'm sure will help the young lads too. So anything I see, I'll do my best to, to help the lads. Yeah, brilliant. Um, obviously, Europe as well that you mentioned there you played in. Um, obviously, your, your pats were, you know, have been in Europe a few times over the last few years. How did you find like playing in Europe and what sort of difference in quality could you see uh, playing in, against these type of teams in Europe? Yeah, well, the game I played was in Sweden. Um, and just like it's just the experience like everything's just different level kind of over there there's just so much so much professionalism um like they're earning a lot of money uh <laughs> compared to us and you can tell the difference like the mm. fans there's lots of fans there like um really good atmosphere is kind of something different to the Irish atmosphere is paused. There's a crowd there with microphones and all that. Uh, really loud. But um, on the pitch, I suppose, they're, they're very technical. Uh, they kept the ball a lot better than us. And they're, they're probably just a level above us, to be fair. Like most teams in Europe are, they, they tend to keep the ball a bit better than us. But we gave them a good game. Uh, and it was a great experience, as I said. Um, so yeah, hopefully um, sometime in the future again, but for now it's just draw it and uh, doing our best to uh, compete in the league of Ireland. Yeah, um, looking back on sort of a part of your time with Chelsea, uh, no, I mean with Pats, Chelsea came to Richmond, that wasn't the question, <laughs> but <laughs> Chelsea came to Richmond a few seasons back, uh, I think it was uh, Frank Lampard's first year in the job. Um, for a lot of first team Chelsea players playing at the moment are still there. Um, playing, we're playing at the moment at that time. Uh, the likes of Olivier Giroud, uh, David Luiz, who's with Arsenal, uh, and, and Andreas Christensen, many more to name. What was that experience like for yourself? And there was also quite a, a lot of younger past players that got a chance there as well against Chelsea that day. Yeah, that was an unbelievable day. Um, probably one of my best days at Pats, just. One experience playing against World Cup winners and stuff like that, and as you said, the young like young lads got the chance to play as well, like probably under 19s lads, so they were really lucky too. Um, but yeah, that was we were chasing shadows for for the majority of the game, but it was a good test as well, just to see where you're at, like and like how far you how far you have to go to get to that level, you know, some of the stuff they were doing was just ridiculous, but like there was a full crowd there, the atmosphere, like everyone was everyone was in Chelsea jerseys now. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh like the atmosphere of Richmond it's so close, the pitch is so close to the fans and stuff like that. So yeah, it was, it was a great day. The sun was shining as well. So uh yeah, really good day. One of the, the better days at Pats for sure. Yeah. A Pat's, Academy, a Pat's Academy graduate like yourself, to make that step up to the first team and have all them sort of experience that we've mentioned, brilliant for yourself and definitely, you know what I mean, you must have enjoyed enjoyed doing that and obviously you mu- you've seen probably the levels of playing from under 19s and taking that step up and how difficult it can be. Yeah, for sure, under 19s up to first team, it's a big step. Um, kind of physicality wise and tempo I suppose is a lot higher um, like 19 it's a really good league the league I was in was really good too but like I suppose you need to kind of that apprenticeship thing where you do a year or two just training with the first team at Pats anyways and getting used to like the standard at training was really good so mm. coming up you're kind of off the pace a bit from 19s and then you gradually have to get used to that that new pace, the tempo and stuff like that, the physicality. And like after that, like y- y- you should be ready um, physicality wise, uh, used to train and stuff like that, the tempo. So you're ready for games then. And then after that, it's just kind of getting used to, I suppose, fans. Like there's not a lot of fans at 19's games. So yeah. it's uh, it's just getting used to that and all other aspects, I suppose. But um, yeah, really good, yeah. 
Yeah, you mentioned there, like taking that step up and having to adjust to having like a, a good amount of fans that's in the, in the ground. Because obviously Richmond, we know what the atmosphere is like and it's, it's quite a hostile and it's a tough place to go to, definitely. Uh, and, and that's down to the fans making it a difficult place to go to. Um, what, how did you like sort of make, how did you adjust to that sort of step up um, in that level of having the fans there? Uh, it was something new but it's weird like once you I wasn't sure how I'd react but it's yeah. like once you get onto the pitch it's like you kind of forget that fans are actually there at times you just focus on your game and uh, like I would have been nervous I remember the first game was might have been Cork and there was loads of fans at that when well, my first start and it was, there was a lot of fans at that Cork were top two at the time with Dundalk Um. But yeah, it, it's just once you get on the pitch, you, at times you forget the fans are there and like yeah. you just focus on every touch you get and make sure that you, every touch is good because like, if your touches aren't great, you, the fans let you know that they're there yeah. for sure. But yeah, it's just about concentrating on your game and hoping that the fans don't get on your back then. <laughs> you are a midfielder yourself who can play both box to box and in an attacking number 10 role. What sort of qualities do you think yourself you can and what you can bring to the to the Dread United midfield? Uh, energy, I suppose. Um, comfortable on the ball and kind of getting the team forward, creating chances. Um, a lot of good midfielders at the club as well, so there's a lot of competition, which is great. You need competition to push each other on and keep improving. So, yeah, hopefully I can bring bring a lot to the table help the, midf- the other midfielders in the team and uh, we can all push each other on and make sure Drogheda are competing next year. Yeah, like signing for Drogheda, obviously Tim would have got in touch with yourself. What made you um, want to actually sign for Drogheda for the 2021 season? Uh, well, Tim was probably the most adamant, uh, like the interest was the most keen out of everyone from Tim. Um, and as well as that, I'm, I'm good mates with a lot of lads. I draw it, Connor Kane, Jack Chu. Yeah. And I've only heard good things from the lads about Tim too. So, you know, the job he's done, uh, not the last year, the year before that, getting to the playoffs and then coming back next year and getting promotion now. It's a really, it's a really good consistency. Yeah. And he's kept a lot of the same players too, which is a good sign that the lads really like him. So it wasn't too hard a decision, as I've said already. Um, really for me. Yeah, like how you obviously you mentioned there about having like keeping players in, in a squad over over a few seasons. How important do you think that is to maintain an actual team and and to like I suppose you could nearly say it, that's what makes a successful team. Yeah, well, the uh, momentum is obviously high in the group at the minute, and I suppose when you sign a lot of new lads, it's kind of like there's no morale there, you know, there's no team chemistry, no bond, I suppose, which is, it's like, it's probably underestimated how important that is in football. Yeah. Um, so, like, keeping on the players from last year was really important, and it's it's all, it's important for me too and the other new lads because it's made it easier that transition going into the into the new squad and like it's been really good where they, we've just settled in straight away because everyone's like in great mood, the, the yeah. chemistry is high, and now it's just about us kind of getting used to what they're like on the pitch and building our own chemistry now with the with our new teammates. Yeah, we kick off our season on the 19th of March at home to Waterford. Um, exciting times ahead for the club, of course. Um, obviously, yourself, you must be looking forward to getting back out onto the pitch and playing Premier Division football. Yeah, it feels like a really long time since I've played yeah. a game of football. So, um, yeah, just dying to get back. And as I said, the team's shaping up like it's it trains of a really high standard at the minute. So, Hopefully we can keep that going and like as long as that keeps going, like it's gonna be an enjoyable season. We'll hopefully be competing really well and as I said, as long as that continues, it's gonna be a really enjoyable year. So hopefully. Yeah, obviously first four games, Warford as I mentioned, packs away, your old club, Tin Harps at home and um, Longford away. How important do you think it is to have a good start to your season so 
to build that bit of momentum then to, to drive you on for the rest of the season. Yeah, well, you don't want to be starting off the season where you're chasing points already. Um, like it's tough. It's there's no easy games in the league. It's a it's a tough enough start, but like I'm sure that we'll embrace it and we'll give a hundred percent. And uh, it's important to get a few points on the board from the start. Um, but if we give a hundred percent, I'm sure I'm sure we'll do that. Yeah, well, brilliant said, and we really, really appreciate your time uh, today, Dara. Thanks very much, and we wish you the best of luck for the rest. No worries, Luke. Thanks season. very much. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much to Dara for his time. We hope you enjoyed episode six of Draw the United Preseason Weekly. Check the links in our description to see all of our various social media platforms. Hit the subscribe button and the bell button to be notified of our next video. Thank you very much, and we will see you next week.